Welcome back to McClatchy Maths. I'm Natalie McClatchy and today we're going to be talking about Eulerian and Semi-Eulerian Graphs. This is part of Unit 4 on Networks and Matrices for Year 12 General Maths and it's going to be part of a series of videos that I'm in the progress of, of making and will be continuing to update over the next coming weeks. We're going to learn some new vocabulary in this video as well as work through some examples. So let's get started with some of that vocabulary. The first one I want to introduce you to is the word walk. Now you know what that is with your own two legs but we're talking about a walk through a network. It's a route that we take through a network including any number of edges or vertices. You don't have to travel every edge and every vertice or you could travel them all more than once. It really depends on what you want to do with a walk. Walks are very flexible and open. So let's say point A was my house and I wanted to deliver some presents to some different friends and finish at friend C's house for lunch. I could do this any number of ways but I'm going to start at point A and I'm going to list off with my pen all of the different points or vertices that I travel through as I go. I can also use arrows along my, my network to indicate the way that I'm going. So notice here I've taken my arrow from point A to point B and then I'm going to go to D, E and C and then I'm going to finish there for lunch. So now I'm going to list um, my vertices that I've traveled and that explains the walk to somebody else of where I've started, where I've finished and what I've visited in between. Now we have something called a trail and a trail is a special kind of walk where no edges are repeated. So in this particular case I could go from A to B to D and then back to A again and then I could go to C and then I could if I wanted to I could go to E and to D. Doesn't really matter as long as I don't travel on the same edge more than once. A, B, D, A, C. I can visit a vertex as many times as I like as long as I'm not backtracking with those edges. Now a path is a walk where I don't repeat any edges or vertices. So this is quite important. You can see that we're stepping up with the little conditions that we're putting on each of these um, different kinds of uh, walks through the network. And this is another example of a path going from A to B to D and then to E and then C. So notice I haven't repeated any of those vertices. I haven't used every edge, but I didn't repeat anything. That's the key point here, that we don't have to use all the parts of the network just as long as we don't repeat anything. We've also got something called a cycle, and this is where I start and finish at the same place. So in this example, I'm starting from point A, moving to B, to D, to C, and then back again to A. Now, Technically speaking, I am repeating the first vertex, which is A, but that's the exception that we make in a cycle. As long as we're not repeating other vertices, it's okay to start and finish at the same place. Now, we've got two different types of routes that we could take. One's called an open route, the other one's a closed route. So we refer to an open walk, an open path, or an open trail. And this happens if we start and finish at different vertices. So here's an example of an open walk through the network, A, B, D, E, C. But they are closed when they start and finish at the same place. And that is indicated with the A being on the end again where I finished up, and that's shown in green. That's a closed walk through the network. We've also got something called a bridge, and that is an edge that if I remove it from the network will disconnect the graph. So in this case, I've got two parts to the network. I've got the diamond and the triangle, and they're connected by the bridge, which is shown in red. But if the bridge removed, then I would end up with two completely separate networks. Now we're going to talk about something special called an Eulerian graph. And obviously this was something discovered by Mr. Euler back in the day. Now he recognized that it's not very efficient to travel through a network by visiting that same edge multiple times. That's a form of backtracking or overlapping your path. So notice here we've got between A and C, we've gone backwards and forwards on that particular part of our, our walk, and that's not very efficient. We're basically covering the same ground. So an Eulerian graph is a connected graph, that's very important to note, and every edge, every edge is only traveled once, and the starting and finishing point are the same. So here's an example of one. Let's say our starting point was A and we've moved all the way around the network. We've taken every edge into consideration and we've started and finished at A. It's a bit like a closed trail where we don't repeat any of those edges and we start and finish at the same vertex. But the key difference is with a closed trail, I don't have to cover every edge. Notice A, D and C, D are missed in a closed trail. In an Eulerian graph, I have to cover every one of those. Now the trail that I travel around an Eulerian graph 
is the pathway that I travel around it. So for example, here, I've gone and started at point B and I've traveled all the way around the graph and the, the pathway that I take is called the trail. And it's the same starting vertex, every edge only visited once. Now we've got something called a semi-Eulerian graph and it's just like it sounds. It's almost like an Eulerian graph. It's just a little bit like it, but not quite. The main difference between the two is that we don't have to start and finish at the same place. So it's semi-Eulerian. Every edge is being traveled once. Now the route that we travel around that is called the semi-Eulerian trail. So on the left here, we've got an Eulerian graph and on the right, we have a semi-Eulerian graph. The main difference here that you can notice is that we're both visiting our vertices multiple times. So actually, that's actually not a difference, that's a similarity. So notice on the left graph, we've been through A multiple times and on the graph on the right, we're visiting the vertex C a couple of times there as well. So that's okay to do that. Also, both graphs, we're only visiting the edges once, but every edge is being visited. So that's a very key distinction. We're not skipping any edges at all. And notice that the Eulerian trail is starting and finishing at A, but the semi-Eulerian trail is finishing at a different vertex. It starts at C, finishes at E. So that's the key difference between the two. And also, this is going to be something very interesting for you to remember. All the vertices on an Eulerian graph have an even degree of two. That's very important to remember. So look at, for example, vertex B. It's got a degree of two, vertex C, and so on. All of them have a degree of two. Now on the semi-Eulerian trail, it has two vertices with an odd degree. If you look at point C, it's got three pathways in and out, and point E has three as well. So they're odd in their vertex degrees, but all of the other vertices have an even degree. So this is your fun fact for today that you need to remember that the connected graph is Eulerian if every vertex has an even degree, and it's semi-Eulerian if exactly two are odd and the rest are even. So let's look at a worked example, finding ourselves a semi-Eulerian tray through this graph. Okay, step one. First of all, we've got to make sure it's a connected graph. It doesn't work if it's not. And we're looking at this one. Yes, it's connected. There's no point sitting out in the middle of nowhere. Okay, step two. We need to have exactly two vertices with an odd degree and all other vertices must be even. Now this is an important starting place. You might think you should just be jumping in and finding that trail straight away. But first of all, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that it can be found because if it's a graph that doesn't have the right number of degrees, you're not gonna be able to find the trail you're looking for. So firstly, I would recommend is that you list all of your degrees uh, by all of your vertex, vertices in alphabetical order and what their degrees are. So notice here, I've got A has th a degree of three, B has a degree of five, and everything else has an even uh, number of degrees. So we know that we can find a semi-Eulerian trail through this graph. That's important for us to verify before we get started. Now, this is going to be a situation where you're going to use trial and error. We don't have to start and finish at the same place, but we have to travel every edge. So I would recommend when you're looking at this and approaching this is to find your two odd number vertices. We found A and B had an odd number degree. And we're going to start at one and finish at the other. And that's where we're going to um, basically um, build our sort of premises when we're going to be looking at semi-Eulerian trails, we'll find one with an odd, odd degree in our vertex and that's where we'll start. Okay, it's also a good idea to have some equipment ready. Now we've got some erasable pens, they're my absolute favourite. Also erasable highlighters are out there now and lead pencils have been around forever. So one of those pieces of equipment is going to really help you to get through the network and do the right things with setting up these routes. So you may have to start and then you find you've gone the wrong way, so you might have to rub things out as you go. I would also recommend writing down your trail on the left-hand side in some spare space and also um, using arrows to show how you got through the network because when you've got big complicated networks, it can get quite confusing as to what you've done if you need to go, go and backtrack. So there's no real easy way, unfortunately. It's just trial and error. Let's have a go. We're going to start at point A and move to point B. And notice I've written those down on the left, A, B. We'll try G, and I'm moving away as far as I can from A, trying to get all of those different vertices and edges included. So now I've got F, 
and then I'm going to move to point H. So far, so good. I haven't got stuck yet, which is excellent. And then I'm going to move now to point D. And I'm almost about halfway through. I've almost covered all of my different edges here. And now I'm going to move to back to point E. And then over to vertex C. And then down to D. So notice D gets visited more than once. That's okay as long as I'm not traveling on the edges more than once. And now up to point A, and so A's been visited twice, that's okay again. And then down to C, up to B, down to E, E's been visited a few times as well, out to F, and then finally, I'm gonna finish at B. That is one huge trail that I've found, but I've managed to cover every edge, I visited some vertices multiple times, that's okay. And I didn't have to start where I finished. Remember, I started at A and finished at B. And that's kind of where I was planning to go in my head from the beginning, because they're my two odd vertex um, places with the odd degrees. That's all we've got time for today. You're gonna need to go and practice now with a whole lot of these until you get really good at it. Have a great day. Thanks for listening.